Okay, so we've done the registration. So we have a hashed password. Now, when we do the login part, we're gonna use the find user again. What I wanna do is I want to find by username. So I'm gonna directly chain that call to get me the correct user. And now I want to verify that the passwords match. To check that the password matches, I'm gonna use the password verify method. This one. The parameters are the password that's coming in from the user input, which is in this case post password, and the hash, which comes from the user. From the database. Password verify returns a Boolean value, true or false. So if, and I'm just gonna take password verify of the password provided by the user, if this matches the password in the database, then we can log the person in, in this case. And this is going to be accomplished by session variables dollar underscore session, user ID is equal to the user, user ID. And then I can redirect the user to the secure location in the website header, location, slash home slash index otherwise the username password combination was wrong so we're gonna basically take the same line as we used in the registration here and the, the message is going to be username incorrect, username slash password combination. Okay. Oh, yes. We can't forget if the user is null, we should not be actually doing this. So if the user is not equal to null and password verify. So if the user is null, then we know that this user doesn't exist. So that's by default an incorrect username password combination. Okay, now the logout part. Logging out is fairly simple. What we wish to do is session destroy to erase all of the session variables and to actually invalidate the session identifier and then redirect to the login page. So I'm just gonna take this line here, header location login index. Very good. Let's try this out. So we have our login view here, no account register. So we have not registered anyone. So let's just try any person with any password login. And we have oops, a problem here because we have an undefined variable with my typos, the user. So let's see what that is on line seven. If the user is 
not null and the password. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so here we don't get to see anything. And that's because we have not written the proper code in our index view to show the error message. So let's just take the line from the register view. And apply it here to show any error message. Incorrect username password combination. Okay, that's correct. That's accurate. We actually have no account. Let's try to register one. So I'll make a username for myself and a very simple password. I have not put requirements on this password. I'll try to register with an error. Username already in use or passwords did not match. Okay, that's good. Now I tried to register. Oh, we have an exception. That makes sense. There's no method create. So let's build it. So let's make the create for this user. Insert. Into user. Username. Password hash. Values. Username and password hash. Okay, so we want to insert in the user username password hash, the values username and password hash. And we are going to connect, prepare this statement, and then execute it. So in this case, I want to add the password hash. And I want to add in this because I am going to run the create method on an object that has been populated and I want to use the object attributes to run the statement and we can remove the fetch mode definition and return row count and that is row count to see if anything was inserted okay so that might work a bit better let's go back and resubmit okay so we get redirected to the login so we can assume that it worked maybe but there's no guarantee so let's go check in the database to see what we have So we have one record in our user table here with the proper username and we have a password hash. Notice how the password hash is quite different from the actual password that was entered. There's an indication of the algorithm that was used to hash the password. There's an indication of the cost that we set for this algorithm. So this is a bcrypt and the cost is 10. So it runs like 1024 times the hash algorithm. This is a blowfish type algorithm to create this hash. And the salt, there's a random salt, which is appended to this. It's appended in such a way that when we try to verify the password, it is possible to verify the password. And we do this by applying the same modification to the user input as was done to the password that was hashed. So we verify that the two hashes are exactly the same given the same conditions. Okay, so let's try and log in. And we logged into the system. Great. So here we're lacking logout links and stuff like that. So let's add the logout link and the actual security that is required to run this. 
so our login controller works. So let's look at our index uh, for the home controller. Well, that's quite a lot of spacing here. Okay. And let's just add a logout link here, just the same as the create link. And this one is going to go to login log out and I don't want to make it a button I just want to make it a hyperlink log out if I save this I see I have a log out button okay I might as well put here a line break I click on log out, I'm back to the login page. Now, that does not guarantee that I'm actually authenticating the user before allowing the user to access this page. And as you can see, there is no problem. I can access it even though I am logged out. So what I wanna do is I wanna add now some checking in the controller to make sure that the user is not allowed in these operations, in these controller methods if the user is not logged in. So I'm gonna show you the quick and dirty way to do this at first, because sometimes it's nice to have a very expedient way of checking that the user is logged in. And this is going to be done with this code snippet. So the code snippet is if session user ID is null, header, I'm just gonna redirect the user, right? Location, slash login, slash index, semicolon, return, make sure that we end the execution of this method, whatever it may be. Okay, and this is what I want to use everywhere. Okay, as I mentioned, this is quick and dirty. There are better ways to do this, which I can address in the later video. I'm not going to allow any user who is not registered to perform any change. Let's see what that does. So now if I try to go to the home index, I get redirected to the login page. Redirected to the login page. I'm gonna try and log in with my registered account. Log in, there you go. Log out, there you go. And there's no going back. All right. So what we've done today is we've addressed a few of the security issues, making sure that we can't access files directly if we don't know their names or list them, and making sure that none of the files in the application can be accessed directly. As well, we added a login system and some authentication control in any of the secured aspect of our web application. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.